present to myself Aww. last year. I started the podcast as my gift to myself. This party and all of you are my gift this year, so thank you very much. Woo! We're going to start tonight, thank you, with a couple of comics who have been on the podcast. One episode has already been released quite a while ago, helped me kick off the podcast. And then the other's episode is soon to be released. We're going to have a conversation. It's going to be a lot of fun. Then we're going to throw it to solo artist Mick to sing a few songs to play for us. Yeah. Yeah. Nick. Then we'll take a little break and have some cake. And then Gregory Barron, the reigning monarchs, are going to jam out the rest of the night. Yeah. 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 All right. So I'd like to welcome up comic, podcaster, Film director, actor, game show host, <laughs> smoothie drinker, and political vigilante, Graham Elwood. That's the weirdest. Oh, you have to flip the switch. There. That's the weirdest resume anyone's ever had. Podcaster, game show host. <laughs> That's right, everybody. Download your podcast for the bonus round. <laughs> he also does morning DJ voice. Do your morning DJ voice. <laughs> Air, introduce me. Introduce me with the morning DJ voice. Hey, everybody. It's the uh, morning zoo crew. Here's badass Becca. <laughs> 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 Sorry, yeah. I was doing both of the guys, the one guy that always laughs. Yeah, yeah. The one gets to talk and the other yeah, gets to laugh. Just laugh. Yeah. That's what do. And then I get to do the traffic. <laughs> <laughs> we won't go there. Maybe we will. I hope so. I want to hear your traffic report. But so, no, thank you everybody. You, I was your first guest, is that right? You're my second guest. So first guest was a person who couldn't be here tonight. But it was uh, the Movies Made Me podcast host, oh, Cheryl Jones. Nice. And I interviewed Cheryl Jones in the lobby of the Dynasty typewriter. And when I, we were going there to see comedy film nerds that night. Mm -hmm. And I reached out on Facebook and I said, I'm trying to get my podcast started. Can I talk to you and interview you while we're at the event? She's like, sure, person. And that was my first interview to get started. You and I met right over here at the beach. Yes. Last September, and yes. I did your interview. And at that time, so we're going to talk a little bit about what the last year has been like. At that time, Graham had started his show, The Political Vigilante, on YouTube. And at the time, I said, you know, due to the inability to control his feelings after the last election, the last presidential election, he sat in his kitchen, turned the microphone and the video on, and just poured his heart out and started talking. And from that has grown the Political Vigilante show and the Progressive Comedy Tour with Ron Cohn. Yes. And at the time, you were throttling at about 9,500 followers on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So pick it up from there. Yeah, so um, uh, that was, yeah, it was, so I've been doing it a little, uh, like a year and a half at that point, I think, when we did the interview last October. Um, and yeah, it was just under 10,000 subscribers. And um, I had just, I started just talking into my iPhone at my kitchen table, literally just reading like the LA Times and then getting mad or something like that was the extent of my news journalism. Like, what a bunch of idiots, you know? Um, and then it's grown, uh, having uh, been on, um, I was on Aggressive Progressives a lot uh, on the Young Turks several times with Ron McCall. Uh, and then I invested in kind of upgrading my studio to a little better camera lighting in front of a screen where I could show clips and stuff like that. And, and we just passed uh, 55,000 subscribers, uh, which is great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Nice. Yep. And I just um, got back from, I went to Russia and I did an Indiegogo because I wanted to see what life was really like in Russia because I feel like we just get, not feel like we are absolutely getting just a one-sided view of that country and I wanted to see what it was actually like so a bunch of fans donated and I just went there and shot a bunch of footage and I'm literally delivering the footage to an editor later tonight and uh, yeah, it's been, it's been an amazing thing and then Rob Placon and I have done our progressive comedy tour because we're both sort of in this uh, indie progressive YouTube political arena and we, we've you know, we did a tour, we started in May of 2018, 
And then this past June, we did the East Coast and we sold out a bunch of shows and, you know, we were in a venue in New York and they had to move us into a bigger room and like that's been growing and uh, so it's, it's, been, it's been awesome. It's been, it's what your, your podcast is all about. Just, it, like, exactly, doing. exactly. Real quick. Welcome guests, come on in. There's Hello guests. food right over there. Get a drink, come on in. Ron, do me a favor, would you press, look at the front of that iPad screen yeah. and press the, uh, the red button. orange, yeah, press the red button. Yeah, you got that it. That would help. Oh, we're recorded? <laughs> we're recording now. Outstanding. We'll start all over again. So I'm a game show host. No, that would be hard. <laughs> We don't want to do that in the this is what happens in podcasting. We have been live, though. We are on Facebook Live. Maybe, oh. maybe we're on Facebook. Oh, live. for real? How do I look? Shoulders back. How What's many, up? Very good. How many chins? Facebook Live. Make it a point. This is my birthday. We start worrying about. Thanks for working with the CIA. Anyway, sorry, that's my other show. Oh, um, that's right. Did you take it to the underground? What's the one you like? To- so what we talk about on the art podcast, the reason I wanted to do this show is I wanted to speak with artists and have conversations and hear how they go for it in life and pursue their art and do what they feel truly led to do despite any evidence to the contrary or any hesitation, fear, the failure, the what are you going to do with your life questions that come with that. I've met and had the joy of being around and seeing artists perform that just go for it and do what they're going to do and there's no not doing it. And I find that very interesting. And so the conversations are really to dig into what makes that happen and how a person achieves that, whatever they're doing. Most of us are working two or three jobs in life anyway, uh, but to be able to balance your passion with your practical side uh, is truly a gift. So, and when you started doing the progressive comedy tour, I reached out, I sent you a note, I was like, this is your art. You've taken all the comedy that you've been doing for more years than we want to say, and <laughs> put it with your passion around politics, and started the tour. It's, and people show up. Uh, it's been so great. I mean, like, Ron can tell you, I mean, I've, I've, I've been doing stand-up comedy, you know, since I was 18, uh, but now that I'm 26, it's, um, it's been a while. <laughs> I'm 50. Anyway, um, so uh, yeah, and I've done over 300 episodes of TV, all this podcasting and all this stuff, and I've never sold, like, we're starting to sell like 100 tickets to, for people there just to see us. I've, ne- I've never, I'm, all this traditional media, all this stuff that I've done, and they're just showing up because they want to hear us because we're both like frequently on the Jimmy Dore show and stuff like that. And it's amazing. And like, our show in New York City was was like we had sold out two nights in Philly. We uh, we sold out Boston, and in New York we were on a Monday night. Yeah. It was a Monday night, but and it was New York. It was New York, right? So, uh, but they had to move us into a bigger room, and the audience. A friend of mine was there, who was a comic, was at the show, and she was like, "Graham, I was trying to get a beat on your guys' demographic, and I couldn't." And I go, "It's everybody." It's millennials all the way up to baby boomers, everybody in between, every ethnicity, every sexual orientation, everything. And it was so, I never had that. And it's like, it is the culmination of like all these years of being a comic and then finally figuring out how to put my politics into making it funny and finding an audience that wants to hear it. And like, they they were like, it was awesome. And we do meet and greets after for like an hour and people, it, it's, it's like, it was amazing. It's, 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 it's the coolest thing. You guys were at the Ventura Harbor Comedy Club not too long ago, just up the road, and I was surprised. I live in that area, and I was shocked at how full the room was. But then I was like, it's Ventura, of course. Everybody's that was the Lee Camp show, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah that's right. He came out from Washington. So, friends, come in. See, we knew if we got started, people would start showing up. Grab some food over there, get a drink, and have a seat. Come on in. So, friend. You've also done a couple of movies. You're a movie maker. Mm -hmm. And so, and most recently, the one, like you said, going to Russia was a little more involved with the political vigilante. But talk a little bit about the other movies, uh, Earbuds as well as Afghanistan. Yeah, the the first uh, documentary I did um, was Afghanistan. I was doing stand-up comedy for the American military and coalition forces in Afghanistan. And I just brought a camera with me, um, which was kind of nuts. And uh, that's... You know, I've gone to film school and all that stuff and shot some short films, but I, I never thought, like, I'm going to be a documentary filmmaker, but I was asked to go perform over there, and my, like, writing partner and 
one of my best friends goes, dude, bring a camera, let's make a doc. And I was like, okay. And shot a bunch of crazy footage, and I was on a helicopter that came under fire, and you see all this stuff, and you see how the, the soldiers live, and, and that was like an amazing experience. Um, and then did Earbuds, uh, the podcasting documentary, which really was a, uh, a, such a love letter, I think, for podcasting and the Los Angeles Podcast Festival, and sort of the 10 years ago when podcasting, at least in LA for us comedians, was all just kind of, we were all kind of getting into it about 10 years ago. And that project was, was so close to my heart because we raised the money on Kickstarter. The podcasting community, literally, the fans paid for the film, podcasters kicked in money. We did amazing interviews with people. Uh, Greg Barrett you know, gives a very emotional, great interview about what he went through and how it affected his podcast. Uh, and him and Dave talked very candidly about that experience and that sort of, we flew all over the world, you know, and that was, you know, uh, an amazing experience. Um, we haven't made much money back from it, so if you could go to granola.com, that'd be helpful. Um, but no, it's, it's, so then, like, these, po and, and even Earbuds was just sort of like, we were, you know, Chris Mancini and Dave Anthony, the three of us, uh, you know, it was Dave's idea to come up with the Los Angeles Podcast Festival, and we were like a couple of years into doing it, and someone was like, oh, man, you know, I might bring a camera and make a documentary, and Chris goes, fuck that, Let's, we should make this, it's our, we know what we're doing, and I was like, okay. That's a Mancini-ism, Chris Mancini. Yeah. <laughs> fuck this. Fuck this, yeah, so, so um, and then that's sort of how all the projects, and then I was talking in the spring, to this woman, Susie Dawson, that's a whistleblowing journalist that's in living in exile in uh, Moscow. And I interviewed her several times and become sort of friends with her. And I was just like, she goes, you should come here, man, and see it. I go, okay. And then I just put it on Indiegogo. And the plane tickets were dirt cheap, and she was like, you can crash at my place. And then I was like, that was awesome. And I just, again, just brought a camera and shot interviews on the streets and showed what life was like was there. And she's like, you know, the NSA was watching me. You just decided to come over here. I was like, you know, I don't know. It's just she got shot at in Afghanistan. Everything else just kind of seems like, yeah, I can handle this. So. But you were really curious about what yes. was going on over there. And you talked to the people in Russia. You're yeah. not necessarily, you're not talking to heads of state or nope. pundits or anything like that. You're talking to people who live there. I talked to a cabbie. I mean, it was like, I, I talked to cabbies. I talked to people who came after my shows. I heard a whole range of things. Some people don't like Putin. Some people do. I saw Starbucks and Krispy Kreme. I, saw, I didn't see any of this anti-American sentiment. I felt like I've been lied to my whole life. A like, big bad Soviet Union. Um, and they're like, you know, they have this very pragmatic, many of them are just like, well, eh, of course, Russia corrupt. So is America, everyone corrupt. Like, they just kind of, eh, it's all bullshit, you know, like, they're like, eh, yeah, Putin, yeah, he stabilized country. Mm, but it's okay, you know, like, we used to have Stalin, he's better. You know, just like, okay. One, a cabbie, a cabbie told me he lost his job and I put some of these clips on my YouTube channel, he lost his job to sanctions that Obama had put on Russia in 2014. And he was working at a very good job working in the port in St. Petersburg as a logistics guy at a cargo port. And he goes, I lost my job because of Obama, now I'm driving a cab. And I was like, oh man, I go, are you angry at Obama or the American government or anything like that? He goes, well, I'm not angry, just like, He's just like, yeah, governments fuck you. Yeah, that's what they do, you know what I mean? It's, if it's not Obama, it's fucking, you know, Stalin or Putin, who gives a shit? Like, everyone's gonna jam you some way. It was just sort of his approach, and it was like, he wasn't mad at me, he was proud of his country, but like, understood that, you know, that's politics. I mean, it was, it was really just like, I got so many cool points of view, there was different kinds of food, it was just so different than anything I've been told or thought, you know? And then you're gonna, Turn that into a Did documentary, that and uh, but that will also bring everyone a perspective, like the every person's perspective from the country of Russia, just talking to the folks who live there. So it's on YouTube. You have some clips, and your YouTube channel is Gray Melwood and the Political Vigilante. Uh, yeah, you just go to YouTube.com/slash Gray Melwood, and uh, there's some clips that I put up there. But there's going to be in the next month or so, like an hour documentary kind of showing the whole arc of me going over there and what life is. That's kind of what I do. That's why I wanted to show 
Like, Afghan, this is what being in a war zone is like for the eyes of a comedian. This is what actual podcasting is like. And this is what being in Russia, talking to Russians is like, just from my perspective, and, and watch it and make your own, make your own, you know, assumptions and decisions or whatever. And you got to do stand-up comedy in Russia. Yes, yes, I did. I did in Moscow. They have the first ever full-time comedy club called Stand Up Club Number One. <laughs> it's like, way to go. Um, so they've had like a stand-up scene there for maybe the last 10 years or so, but it's been more just like in bars or whatever, and this was their first like actual 250-seat comedy club. And uh, the audience, and then I performed again in St. Petersburg at another like fairly new, they have like two rooms, they have a 120 seat room and like an 80 seat room, but like MCs, nightly shows, um, Russians doing stand up in Russia. Um, it was so cool. I mean, the, when the comic there that booked me, this English guy, he goes, Grant, just so you know, you're the most experienced comedian in the whole country of Russia right now. It was, it was fantastic. Like, and I did crowd work, like I was just, and, and they were just like, oh my God, it was amazing. And I was just like, I felt like a magician who like, they'd never seen a rabbit come out of a hat before. And they're like, you talk to a guy in the audience, he said something and you make fun of it. I was like, yeah, no, I'm fucking amazing. Like, nobody knows how to do that. Um, so it was really just, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah, because every comic knows how to do that. But uh, yeah, it was, it was, it was really cool. And, I thought it would be mostly expats, like you know, people from the U.S. or the U.K. or whatever. It was mostly Russians, and they're they really like stand-up comedy. And the idea for them, like anytime, like an American or like a British or an Australian comic comes over there, they're always like, "Oh wow, well this is your guys' art form. We want to see you do it." So um, it was really, it was really. It was awesome that the, the, this English guy had been living there for 10 years, he told me, he gave me this advice, he goes, just talk 10 to 20% slower, because it's not their first language. And I was like, okay. And it was so fun. It was great. That works for me too, actually. <laughs> Are you having fun, Rebecca? I am. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to have Ron Placone come up. And do you want to interview Ron? Or do you want, what do you want to do? Let's see. I was going to have the two of you come up here together. Um, can we just scooch that chair over? Oh, okay. Yeah. I got it. I got it. I'll slide down the couch like old school Johnny Carson. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. I didn't Hello. Work. Hello. That's a... Uh... That's amazing that the club was called Stand Up Comedy Club One. Like, welcome to Stand Up Comedy Club One. Like, by the way, guys, I gotta get going after this. I have a set in Hollywood at Stand Up Comedy Club Two Thousand Two Hundred Twenty Six. So, I'll be going to that. <laughs> you told me you were gonna maybe go to the Morrissey concert number two hundred and sixteen. Whatever that is. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I was thinking about going in tonight, but, but nah, not tonight. Yeah, I'm gonna skip it. We're gonna hang out here with the cool We're people. We're gonna hang out here. We're gonna hang out here with the cool people. Are. Yeah. So Ron Placone, and recently I got to interview you, and thank you very much for being on the art. That will be coming up soon. Ron had a show called Five Chords and the Truth. Yeah, we, we did a music and politics podcast for a little bit. We we don't have it anymore, but yeah, we had a nice little run with that. Because that's both of your passions, music. Comedy, you do, you do, you perform comedy, but you Grant's don't. Grant's a big film guy. I'm a big music guy. Okay. So we have, we have those conversations in the car. Okay. Here's <laughs> uh, <laughs> how our conversations in the car go. He, like all music people, will bring up some obscure band that I've never or anyone's ever heard of, and he talks about it like it's the goddamn Rolling Stones or something. <laughs> He'll be like, you know, it's, they kind of sound like the Bone Weasels. I'm like, who are the Bone Weasels? You never fucking heard of the Bone Weasels, Grant. You don't know the Bone Weasels. They sound like the Whistling Bones. They have this, and I'm like, I don't know what that is, but then I'm the same thing. Like, I'm a film nerd, so then I'll be like, you know, it's like that scene in, in Seven Samurai. He's like, what's Seven Samurai? Like, You're the one that's Seven Samurai! You don't see any characters on Those are our conversations. I'm you like, don't deserve to live. What do you when I interviewed, if you listen to the interview with Nick, I listened to one of his songs, and I said, it kind of reminds me of the Pogues, and he, he was very cool. He was like, the Pogues. You don't know the Pogues? You don't know the Pogues. You do I love the folks. Well, you do. I do because an alcoholic in college played it a couple of times. Right? Naturally. Who else knows? Naturally. Show of hands. The Pogues. There it is. The musicians. The band. The musicians. The band. Yeah. 
Okay. Call us alcoholics. Bronze, Bronze. I'm impressed. Because you're our young friend. So. Thank you. No, my, my fiance is from Massachusetts, so she's a, she's a big Dropkick Murphys fan. So I had to be like, have you listened to the Pogues? And she's like, no. And I'm like, all right, we got work to do. We got we to gotta talk about this. We got to work through this. You got to listen to the Pogues. The musicians appreciate it. Before the wedding. Before the wedding. <laughs> we got to work this out. So now that we've brought it up, uh, name two Pogues songs everyone should uh, download and check out. I'll, uh, just check them out. You well, know. I mean, I'll go with some of the OG covers they did, like Wild Rover uh, and all that catalog, because that's important, like Irish folk music, everyone should know. And so I say start there, and then, and then uh, did we lose everybody? Did we lose everybody? Who's still with us? How could people not get Irish Blink folk music? Blink twice if you're into this. <laughs> <laughs> it's Irish folk music. <laughs> Waltzing Matilda. Okay. I was asked the question. <laughs> so your next show, Ron, after Five Chords and the Truth, I just think that was a cool name. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. And yeah. after that? Well, now I, do, I, I do Get Your News On with Ron, where, uh, where I, I do a live stream where the audience sends me what's going on in the news. And so the fun of it is, it's like I just respond to what they send me. So they'll send me something, and I'll be like, oh, geez, and I respond to it very viscerally, uh, sometimes very angrily, sometimes very, you know, humorous. Like, sometimes people just send me, like, crazy stories. Sometimes people send me, you know, a lot of times it's something very topical, very political on what's going on, and, and we kind of talk about it. And then, you know, Music Monday's a big deal, too. So on, on Mondays, we do, like, music-friendly stories, and I always do a song of the day, and, and uh, you know, we'll do a poke soon on Monday. I feel like it's appropriate. But, but, um, I will tune in. Yeah. But yeah, so that's what I do now. I think that's really cool that you open it up to send me a new story and I'll talk about it. Just kind of extemporaneously. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, it was one of those things where it's like, with live streaming, there's so many different uh, approaches you could take to it. So I was like, well, what about something? And, and I think like people really like being interactive. So it's like, well, what about those things? I would see people that would watch a lot of like YouTube-centric shows, and they'd be like, oh, I hope they talk about this, and I hope they talk about this, and oh, they talked about that instead of this, and I wish they... So I'm like, well, what if someone did a show where it's like, well, you kind of have a say in that, because you can like tweet something. I don't get to everything people send me, um, but, you know, I get to a fair amount, and, uh, you know, and I don't like go straight up in order either, like I kind of like look through it and pick out stuff, but... But you know, I do the best I can. Like, I won't let you know every person only gets one. You know, sometimes people send me like three or four things. I'm not going to do three or four things just from them. I do something from as many different people as possible. And then I have a Reddit subsection too. So sometimes people drop it in the Reddit subsection, and then you know, I grab stuff from there as well. So it's it's neat. So this is what it's like when you come to a podcast show. Irish folk music Reddit subsection. <laughs> Talk about the Progressive Comedy Tour. You guys are going to Australia. Yeah, that's really exciting. I'm very stoked. We're going to Australia. Uh, that'll be the first inter... Graham's toured a bunch internationally. I have not, but this will be our first international thing uh, with the comedy tour that we've been doing. And uh, yeah, as Graham said, we started in May of 2018. We, our first show was in Arizona, because we're like, we gotta go to the Progressive Epicenter. <laughs> If we're going to do the progressive comedy tour. Where the most hippies are. <laughs> but no, we, we, we've done, um, how many reasons has it been now? It's been, you know, yeah, we've done about, because what we do, you know, we both have stuff that kind of keeps us in L.A. a lot during the month, so we'll do like one region a month and just fly out there, do a handful of shows, fly home. So, uh, yeah, it's been fun that way. And Graham mentioned the East Coast tour. That was such an amazing experience when we hit the East Coast, and that, and that was like when it was just like, wow, we're really, we're onto something. This is really freaking cool. Yeah, yeah it was, it was, um, I mean, we, we kind of made a point of going to like some red states, like we've gone to red areas, and we've had some decent turnouts and some not, but we were like, we sold out in Louisville, um, we had, uh, you know, we, got, we did a bunch of really good shows in Florida, and Astro North Carolina, we did well, and we did well. Like it was really, it was really, it was really cool. And we did a bunch of shows in Texas um, that did really well. Yeah. And so that was like, it, it, it's been really cool to see this like, uh, this people all over the country really want this kind of working class uh, message. 
it was funny. I saw, they posted online they're going to the southeast. I'm from the southeast originally. Like everybody else, I'm a transplant, but I've lived in California longer than anywhere. But they posted, and I, I hit Graham online, and I was like, watch your ass down there, man. <laughs> Someone will pick a fight and just, just for sport. It'll be, it'll be our second time. We, yeah. I mean, you guys had no problems whatsoever. I used to live there. I used to live in Nashville, Tennessee. So you know, like when we when we did the Southeast, we uh, I think we hit Asheville, North Carolina, which was I mean that was our first sellout. Well, we that's sold Asheville. Out. Yeah, we sold out yeah. in Asheville. You're not gonna have a hard time in Asheville. Yeah, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, we, we did Vegas. We did Vegas twice. Yeah, the first time we sold Vegas. Out. We sold Vegas out the first time, and then the second time we we had a decent turnout too. It was a slightly bigger venue. But uh, yeah, so we've done Vegas. Um, we've tried Mississippi, even. We wanted to see what would happen. Um, you don't have to say it like that. No, I mean, it was, <laughs> it was an interesting experience. It was just like, we're like, well, let's see what happens if we go to college down in Mississippi. But, How did Mississippi taste when you tried it? Um, well, there was more people at this show than the one in Mississippi, let's just say that. Yeah, it wasn't. <laughs> let's, let's just be fair. And <laughs> Mississippi has its own issues that we can't help. We tried. We tried. We, we goddamn tried. We showed up. <laughs> we showed up. And uh, I actually, what I was really hoping for is that we would go through like the Delta area, because I'm a big Delta Blues fan. And uh, we were on the other side of the state, and I didn't realize it until it was like way too late. <laughs> I was like, oh well. Where's but, the uh, Delta Blues? Yeah, but New Orleans was. I mean, yeah, New Orleans was really good. Cool. And then, yeah, Pensacola, Florida, of all places. We sold out this room in Pensacola. Um, we didn't know what to expect going to that place, but it was incredible. So. All right. Well, thank you guys very much for talking with us. Coming back, let me know, catch up with you and what's going on. Good luck with the Progressive Comedy Tour and keep going with the Political with Delaney. Uh, any questions from the audience before we move on to music? Yeah. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. So Nick's going to get set up. So don't go anywhere. We're going to play music, and then we'll take a break, and the band will come up. Yeah. Hand this over to you. I'll help you with these.